Well, it's just after six, so I will call the meeting to order. Um, and I guess we should handle these continuances first, so we don't keep you. Um, what did, um, Ken, what the continued public hearing on Borrego, um, did they suggest a date or just? Yes, they did. They, they sent a, uh, an email in. It says, uh, good afternoon all on behalf of Borrego Solar Systems. I'm emailing a request to continuance for tonight's planning board hearing on 140 Tahonet Road to February 8th, 2021. They received the Charlie's comments and want to uh, continue so that they can address the comments. And on the special permit for um, Tyler Ave, is there a preferred date for? Um, I think the eighth would work well if that works with your agenda. Mm -hmm. Can the um, the February first uh, is that the public hearing or is that a? That's the public hearing on the HRE, the Hospitality Recreation Entertainment Bylaw. Okay. So we're gonna keep that solely for that purpose. So yeah, okay, the, the eighth would be, does that work with everybody, uh, board members? That's yeah. fine. Oh, uh, there's Richard. Yeah, the eighth works. And the public hearing for Zero North Carver Road, are they, I don't know if anybody's here for that. Good evening, yes, um, Sarah Stearns is here for uh, Zero North Carver from Beals and Thomas. Mm -hmm. just, a, just a question at this point, do you wish to proceed? We don't have a full board with us tonight. Um, we would prefer to wait for the full board. Okay. How many members do you have this evening? Uh, three. Yeah, I think we'd like to wait so that we have the benefit of discussing the project with all. Mm -hmm. We do have the Mullen rule available to us where people missing one hearing could look at the video, but if you'd rather do it live, that's up to you. Does, since this is just site plan review, do we need the super majority for a vote for it? Yes, you do. And this is a five member board? Correct. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, will the, since we haven't opened the hearing yet, will it need to be re-advertised and re-hosted? No, I will open it and continue to the eighth if that works for you. Okay, yes, I think I think we would prefer to do that just for the first one to get all the information out at once. Thank you. Sounds like a plan. Um, all right, so with that, I would look for a motion to continue uh, the site plan for 140 Tyhonet Road, Borrego Solar Systems to February 8th. Motion to continue Borrego Solar Systems, February 8th, Tyonet Road. Do I have a second? <laughs> Do we lose Richard again? I'm here. Anyway. My, I, I have a hard time with the mute and unmute. I'm sorry. I second that motion. <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Uh, next would be to continue the special permit for 5 Tyler Avenue uh, to February 8th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. You just turned green, Richard. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. And finally, to continue the site public hearing for site plan review for Zero North Carver Road. 
D E R E L L C, I guess. Motion to continue. Excuse Second. me, Mr. Chairman. Does the yes. hearing officially need to be opened first before continuing? That would probably could be a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. I don't <laughs> usually go. For, for, <laughs> All right, I'll look for a motion to open the hearing. How's that? Um, all the paperwork in place, Ken? Yes, it is. Uh, you, you had a public notice that the public hearing will be on January 25th at 6 p.m. for a site plan review for the requirements of Article 3, Table of Principal Use Regulations of Wareham Zoning Bylaws to B-E-R-E-L-L-C, here of Beals and Thomas, 32 Court Street, Plymouth, Mass, seeking construction and Installation of a dual use large scale ground mounted solar energy facility located at 0 North Carver Road, where in Mass. And all the uh, cards have been returned? Yes, the green cards have returned. All right. I'll look for. Did, did I do a motion to open? You asked for it. I asked. Motion to open the public hearing on 0 North Carver Road. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. No. Motion to, con motion to continue public hearing on Zero North Carver Road. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Uh, thank thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. thank you. I'll get used to these Zoom meetings one of these days. We're all living in strange times, so it's fine. <laughs> um, I, I, if I may just add one comment, um, I believe that our materials were sent to Mr. Rowley too, so this added time may give him um, the opportunity to review and we're happy to work with him as the board sees fit um, and as needed prior to the next hearing. Was that in the response letter, Ken, or was that for something else? The response letter was for uh, 140. Um, okay. Okay. George, I just need confirmation that the 53G account is set up for it. That's all. I have the okay. documentation. I'm just waiting for that out of Ken's office. Okay. We'll make sure that that gets, we'll close the loop on that. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, back to preliminary business. We have an a approval not required plan for Lawson Realty Trust LLC for 504 Main Street. Yes, we're here tonight. Um, I have a copy of the plan. I don't know if either of you do or if Ken can put it up. I, I'm looking at it. George on here locally. The um, this is a plan you've seen before. I think they uh, came in for a I think it was just a look say I don't think it was an was it an apple actual application for an AI or no, it was just informal new business. Informal. But if you want, I can start with a narrative. I know uh, the representative Pete Lyons from Collins Engineering, he's trying to share his screen right now to bring the plan up for everyone to see on the Zoom. Well, that'd be good. Ah, there it is. Here we go. So you'd like to describe what you... Yeah, I'll start, I'll start with a narrative if I could. Uh, Thank you all. Good evening. My name is Brendan Brewer. I'm the representative for the property located at 504 Main Street in Wareham. Uh, this property was a foreclosed property and in pretty bad shape. Uh, we made every effort to restore the home back to its original form from the exterior. Uh, we're here before you today with an ANR plan looking for the relief of the 150 foot radius requirement. Um, the proposed newly created lot has a 105 foot radius. Uh, other than that, it has a sufficient lot square footage, lot frontage, and uh, meets all the required setbacks. Uh, we had come previously uh, informally, and we took your considerations, went back with our engineering, and uh, we came. We originally had a 98-foot radius, and we were able to increase that to 105-foot. And uh, 
we're not looking for any relief on the existing lot, but just the newly created lot. And uh, we just believe that this is the best use of the property for us um, with, with a builder um, and the owner. But uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to uh, keep going on this project, but we're kind of at a standstill here um, until we figure out what we can do um, with the property. And uh, we're looking for um, basically the relief of the 150 foot radius tonight. And endorsement of the ANR as well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, any questions? Anybody? Can you see that okay? Or do you have what the advantages of um, that uh, three-legged line that separates the house from the rest of the lot? Uh, why that couldn't be a straight line out to Main Street? That's to meet the requirement for the frontage on the existing home of the 150 foot for the MI 30 zone. I was looking at that other number there. Wasn't aware it was that far. Okay. Right. The frontage for this lot would be the 201 feet of frontage on Stony Run Drive. We only need a simple majority to tonight on this. On the. That's correct. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, what I think is the existing lot lines and the lot on the left, if, I, if I'm correct, and I need you to confirm for me, is basically a rectangle right now with Main Street and Stony Run Drive, um, the west and north borders. And you've added land on the south side from the from the number 504 lot which is lot b here to give it the proper uh square footage is that do i understand correctly that's that's correct and if you left the lots exactly how they are now um you'd need uh the lot on the on the west side uh, doesn't meet the, the square footage requirement. Is, is that right? And doesn't meet the radius. Well, the the both lots will meet the square footage requirement. Um, I don't know if I understood that correctly, but with the relief that we're looking for would just be the radius on this newly created lot. George, do we have any um, any history on uh, or any precedent for this? that you know of? I haven't been on the board long enough. I haven't seen a request like this before. This this one was in front of us before, but what did we continue it? No, yeah. it, it just came in for discussion the first okay. time. Yep. And I think the lot lines, the frontage was a little different for the big house because for some reason in this area, there's two frontages listed, one for single family and one for multifamily. And they've decided mm -hmm. to leave 504 Main Street as a single family. Is that correct? That, that's correct. I mean, it's in an MR30 zone. We have the square footage and the requirements to make it a multifamily. Um, we don't think that's what's best for the neighborhood. Um, it's pretty much, you know, single families all under, you know, all, most, most of the lots, if not all of them around us, um, uh, undersized, they're under a half acre, um, you know, and they're all pretty much single families behind us. Um, you know, we, we cleaned up a blight. We've had a pretty good relationship so far with all the neighbors. And we think the best thing for us to maximize this instead of going to a multifamily would be to, you know, um, put a single family there and we're still creating, you know, uh, more housing in the town. So, uh, You're muted, Rich. <laughs> Sorry. So George, Ken, uh, Charlie, um, any precedent for um, granting an A&R with an undersized uh, radius circle? 
Under section 815, 615 of the uh, zoning bylaw, there's a lot shape factor, which asks for the circle to be put into the lot to show that the area can meet the uh, dimensions as, as, as required by the, the, uh, the frontage. Uh, but uh, this uh, section of the bylaw also says that the planning board has the authority to waive the, the requirement that was added in uh, 2004. Have we done it before? Anyone aware of it? Yeah, we've, we've we've done it in the past. So the thing the thing that comes to my mind is uh, on this is, and I, I've driven up there to look at it. Um, that lot's basically unusable unless we uh, make some uh, some allowances here. And I think I think uh, what I'm seeing in front of me is has minimized the uh, number of allowances that being asked for. Um, we definitely could use the housing. We could use the the, the bedrooms. So I'd be in favor of moving forward on this. I don't see any reason not to. I'm sure there are some, but on the surface, I, I'm positive toward this. The only and, thing and, I um, see is that maybe you could straighten out that, uh, what is that, north-south dividing line to get a little further away from the existing dwelling? Are we have to adjust the back of that line next to the garage, George, in order to preserve the frontage and not unbalance the area because you've only got uh, what's it, like 22 square feet to play with on the small of the two lots. So I would love to see the line straight rather than encroach on the house as much as it does. But um, I don't think there's much you can do with it un unless they want to seek a variance on the Board of Appeals. Well, you could pick it up on the southern tip there, bring it down to that corner. I don't know if it comes up to the same number or not. But you know what I mean? The southern tip of uh, just above where it says map 61, lot 1175. There is, there is, you know, 7,200 a square footage that still in play on, on lot B uh, that you could bring over. But I think the, the reasoning for that jog is basically to meet that 150 foot of frontage on that existing lot. I don't, but you wouldn't put the house back there, I don't think. No, 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 no. And uh, well, that George, you had a, you had a thought. I just got thinking of it a little bit here. Um, in the area that's on the extreme southerly end of that lot, it's chopped off on the picture that I'm looking at. Um, but there you go, Ken, thank you. If you were to take out a piece of that out of lot B and add it to lot A, then you might be able to straighten out that lot so you could balance it and make it a straight line and pull it away from the big house. It would, it would uh, reduce the uh, diameter of the circle somewhat, but there's still plenty of uh, building area. And if you look at all of the houses that are up on Tower Terrace, they're all of the same uh, smaller lot size than this. And I don't think that would be a significant issue. You could balance the area so it would still have 30,000 square feet minimum by taking a piece out of the southerly end of lot B and adding it to lot A when you straighten it out. And say so you've got a nice, uh, the, nice the solar room. room there, you wouldn't want a fence to be 10 feet away from it. <laughs> no, but what it would do would be to impact the 100 foot diameter circle. So you'd have to consider that you'd have to reduce that 100 feet to something less than that mm -hmm. to do it. Um, Collins, any idea how much that dimension would change? <laughs> Good evening, guys. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, what's that? So change the dimension. Uh, so basically what to extend the, this, the lot line parallel with the carriage house, uh, extend it straight north until we intersect with the 73 foot line. Is that what you're talking about doing? Yeah, roughly right? to your, to the end of your frontage. 
Yeah, I can I can get you an area just trying to sneak out of this screen without shutting you down totally. So hang on a second. Pete, I think we originally had it like that, but when we tried to increase the radius, I think that's uh, – we might have jogged that out. Yeah, no, I mean, that that's the concern. Um, from last time, we were looking to increase that radius. So, you know, so that's kind of how we ended up with the minimum 10 feet to the existing 504 um, is to preserve the, the max diameter of the new circle on lot A. So – I mean, I, I can get you an area, you know, if we were to do the flip-flop, um, either way, lot B would still have sufficient frontage. You know, we'd be adding a couple hundred or, you know, maybe a few thousand square feet onto lot A. Um, let me just get you a rough number quick. Uh, yeah, the area is about a thousand square feet. If we were to straighten out that line, that would be added to lot A. Um, and the, you know, you'd end up minimizing the circle to, to about 95 feet, uh, just quick numbers for lot A. I guess it really comes down to the board's um, opinion on which way to proceed with that. Um, unless Brendan could speak to, you know, what what you you guys might try to be doing with the lot in the future. Are you trying to preserve that back space on lot A? Um, is there any reason we don't want to bring that line in? You know, Brendan, maybe you can speak to that. But on lot A, are we talking on the southern southern point of that plan? Um, no, the, the 10 foot jog near the existing, uh, the 10 foot offset to the existing 504 residents, uh, they're, they're no base. I have no problem moving that off. Um, it won't, you know, it just shrinks that radius. We were just trying to, yeah, that's all. Yeah. So we're, we're willing to flex on that. Whatever the, if the board thought that that would be better for the lot factor. I'm just thinking it would be more proportioned with a 504. It would, I think the end result would be better yeah. for both properties. And you could I, make I agree it that. at the I southern think the point. Spotlight move would be better. So if that's if that's what you like, we can have that drawn. We will, we have to continue to the next meeting and have a that lot line moved, or with the can you do an approval with that as a condition, or no? Well, we can't condition an A and R, but um... what's the board's pleasure? Isn't it? I, I would say that in this case, I mean, giving the existing neighborhood a single family probably fits best. So if you move the line, it makes the most sense as opposed to three family or. Well, R Russell, it's my, it's my understanding that um, <laughs> the A&R just approves a lot the lot would be is in an area where multifamily is allowed. Right. Isn't that true? So we have no control about what uh, uh, what would uh, go in there. Ultimately, all we all we can do is approve a lot with uh, a smaller than expect than required uh, radius circle. Um, oh, I thought he was presenting a single family. Well, let's be very, let's be clear to maybe I'm wrong, but um, he, right now the developer has indicated his intention is to do a single family, but right. he is not held to that by anything we do. I got gotcha. you. Is yeah. that true, George? 
Uh, correct. You, you're looking at frontage and area. And no. plus the mod shape back. I take the developer as, as being, you know, forthright, and that right now that's what his intentions are, but um, things could change. Um, yeah. Valid reasons. But um, George, we you can't conditionally approve a, an ANR has to be exactly how it is. I'd love to approve this for him tonight, but I also like the idea of simple making the lines as simple as possible. I, you know, it looks like we're gerrymandering, and um, which is you know legal and and whatnot. But anything we can do to make it clean, let the guy in five the existing dwelling. Mowies lawn that with straight lines would be good. Well, I'd say that there's a nice sunroom on 504, and you wouldn't want to say put fence 10 feet from it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that I think that's the right thing. I, I would I would like to see the line straightened out, give a little more space from fi the existing dwelling 504. Uh, reduce the, the radius circle down to 95 or whatever. I'm okay with that. I think that's the right move. Richard, to ask you a question, uh, I believe that you, the planning board's got 21 days to render a decision uh, from the date of filing, and I believe the date of filing would be considered tonight uh, because it's submitted to the board. So that between now and February 8th, there's plenty of time for the plan to be revised to show that line straightened out. Uh, but you still have to vote on a reduction in the 100 foot diameter circle. Yeah, I'm right with you, Charlie. George, do you remember if, if we have a precedent that has over 50 feet in that circle that we've waived? Or have we waived circles that are a lot closer? Um, I don't know exactly, but. <laughs> It's funny, it's, it's to prevent hockey stick shaped lots. And right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is not as, uh, this is more like a goalie stick. Yeah. <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, so I, su I suggest we straighten out that line on the, on the uh, west side of the existing, existing lot the existing dwelling line and uh, um, I think we need we owe it to the we owe it to the developer and the engineering firm here to let them know that with that change that these three members here tonight um, would uh, approve this a and R I mean I would mm -hmm. yeah I think that's a, a fair assumption that we we stick to this when we have a full board once we've made this recommendation. Fair enough. You'll have and to I would say you're probably going to gain your square footage down at the southern yeah. most, which would eliminate 504 from having to go behind your property for access. So is that, uh, yeah, I don't think too many people build. 50 foot deep houses, <laughs> which would be about with 20 feet of frontage and 10 foot rear setback. Um, you're going to be around 50 feet building area front to back. You could even move up and make some sort of an L shaped thing if you wanted to. But, um, so that's where the board is at at this point. Uh, we're good with the reduction in the shape factor. And, and to go from the carriage house where you have the setback dimension 10 feet from that corner back out to Main Street is the line we're talking about. Pete, you understand that, right? Yes, I got you. Yep. I'm actually just sketching it up right now so I can <clears throat> clean it up later. Yep. At the end of that 25.41 dimension. 
measurement? Yep. Right. We're going to run that straight, uh, straight north, almost perpendicular to Main Street, and uh, tie it in with the 73-foot line. And uh, that, that leaves us with a 93-foot radius for the proposed lot A circle. to read with the line you're going to adjust that's running parallel to stony run drive is it not correct okay almost um I'm just looking at the two bearings and can't quite make them out but they look almost parallel uh yeah. yes they yeah, are a little bit off but a lot more uniform than it is now pete if we came in and, and met that uh that in that 75 if, where that's coming off towards the uh, sunroom there. If we yep. met that halfway, would that bring it off of the sunroom and keep a little bit of a bigger radius there? Or? Um, can, can you say that again? What, so bring it into where the 10 foot dimension is? Past that, about almost towards Main Street. Just leave a little bit of a jog. I was just thinking if that increased the, the radius, but I, th I think that if we do that and make the line straight with what the suggestion of the board was, I think that'll, that'll work. Just roughing it out on the screen, it looks like projecting the line, which is parallel to the carriage house, out toward that 73 foot line. The intersection point would be about halfway on the 73 line. Yep, you're, uh, you're pretty close. I, I got it drawn out actually on my computer and it, it directs right to the 30 seconds on the bearing for that line. So yeah, uh, just shy of halfway up that lot line towards Main Street is your intersection. Yep. Just about the same distance as a projection of the front line of the house. Yep, and then uh, we can we can easily gain that area back in the, the southern portion of the lot. Everybody understand that? Yep. Yep. Very good. Uh, motion to continue to the eighth. Second. Discussion? Is there all in favor? Aye. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. I'll see you on, on the 8th. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, the future, I think that's all I have. Uh, Ken, do you have anything? No, your next meeting is on the zoning next week, next Monday. Mm -hmm. I, want, I had some 48-hour business I just wanted to talk to a little bit, if I could, George. Sure. Um, I want to talk a little bit to the board about um, the Deca School Project. I've shared information with you, and um, uh, that the W uh, as a WRA member, we've been working on. If I could uh, share my screen just for a second. Can people see the map? Yes. Okay. Um, the WRA has been working with um, SERPED and we worked a little bit with Penrose, asked them to look at this property where the Deca school is now about what we should do with it uh, once the school closes down. And um, it's all the feedback has come back uh, that it's a ve very valuable commercial space and we should be using it for commercial space. The SERPED organization has put together an analysis. I shared that with you guys. At the WRA meeting, we've talked about how that land has to be rezoned to, be, to use it for commercial space. And uh, Ken shared with us, uh, or the SERPED actually thought that the, the business development overlay district was a good model that could possibly be expanded into that area. And Ken's looked at that pretty close and um, 
we don't feel that way any longer. We do think a, that the, the BDOD may need to be tweaked or upgraded or a, a different type of zoning proposal is necessary for the DECA school. And on, in my perfect world, um, I'd really like to see the planning board and the WRA work together and uh, maybe meet together and discuss the type of zoning that we want to put into that DECA school area. And um, that way we, we work together and come up with something that uh, both the WRA and the planning board are both comfortable with and happy with and can sponsor together. Um, I don't know if that's feasible or possible, but that's just what my pipe dream is anyway. But I wanted to share with you just a little bit about what we're talking about here. The, this area here, it outlined in purple with the cross hatches, that's the existing business development overlay district. And we're talking about um, this lot right here, 101, 105, 103, the railroad tracks here, maybe 1000A, not sure. Um, but you can see it does not touch, it came, comes real close, it does not touch the existing BDOD, nor does it touch Wareham Crossing. But um, the overlay district that we're talking about to, for the DECA school should probably in, encompass uh, Wareham Crossing. I know there's some zoning issues there that could be straightened out. Uh, Ken, please feel free to muzzle me if I'm saying anything stupid or wrong. Um, You're my, doing good, Rich. Okay. <laughs> my real goal, though, is to, is to bring this to the planning board early because we were very early in this right now and um, ask this planning board to, to walk away from the meeting tonight just thinking about would they be willing to work with the WRA, with SERPED, to come up with a comprehensive zoning proposal for this area to take advantage of the, uh, the commercial opportunities that are there. So um, there's no, I'm not asking any question tonight. I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention what's going on and and uh, ask you to think about participating in the creation of this proposal uh, slash zoning overlay, whatever it ends up being. Um, I think it'd be a great, it's a great opportunity for interdepartmental uh, cooperation, uh, something this town uh, really needs in my opinion, and this would be a great way to kick something like that off. Anyway, that's all I have. Can I ask a question, Richard? Sure. Um, would you include those uh, single family house lots on the north side of Main Street? Um, that's, a, that's a great question, Charlie. If you look at this, and, and the answer is uh, we don't know yet. And I think that if the WRA and the planning, to get, planning board were working together uh, on this, it's a question that we as a, as a team could, could uh, go after. Um, I'm gonna, it's interesting if you look, um, the, you're talking about these houses right here and right. the lodge. Right. Yeah, they're in the industrial zoning area. Yeah, that where, whole thing doesn't make any sense to keep it industrial since it's, yeah. it was put in the industrial zone when commercial uses were allowed. So that's how the, um, the whole uh, Wareham Crossing development uh, got put in there. But it would seem to me that it would be a good time to change that, make it commercial so that it is uh, not in the industrial zone, rezone those small lots. If you're going to think about the Deca School property, do that and also include the, the property where, well, it's not Bionomics now, whatever the name of that is, that's just beyond the railroad track. Mm -hmm. That, that was that, right. I mean, They're in an MR30 zone, I believe. So why not make them uh, compliant for commercial uses and retail uses like they are? Which one's that, Charlie? What property? The one it's on the, the other one, side of it's Station It's the one Street. that's across the railroad track, and it's uh, a lot. Oh, it's I can't see what the number is. It's Smithers Vissian is the uh, business there at 13 Station now. Yeah, it was Bionomics. I don't know what they go by now. Oh, right here. Yeah. 
Smithers, yeah. Smithers, yeah. yes. I couldn't think of the name. <laughs> I was going back a few names ago with Springboard. Yeah, yeah I, 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 you guys, what you guys have brought up is something that's been in my mind. Ken has informed me about the goofy zoning for Wareham Crossing. Um, I've looked at the the industrial zoning versus the commercial zoning that's down there. I've looked at the Smithers. It, uh, none of it makes a whole lot of sense. It'd be a great opportunity to clean it up and uh, and do something with some foresight and long range planning. So it seems like every time we try to do something in this town, it's going to take a town meeting vote to change the zoning. So I mean, it'd be nice to get out in front of that a little bit for once. But anyway, like I said, um, we don't have the full board tonight. I have shared the, the link with everybody for the, uh, the, the SERPED, oops, the, the SERPED analysis that they did on the property. And um, so this board has that link. Um, you can go in there and see what uh, work they did. And, um, and hopefully we can, uh, in my, in, like I said, in my perfect world, we'll do this together. So think about that and we'll, uh, we'll, We'll put it back on the agenda for our next meeting and when we have Mike and Mike here. Mm -hmm. My only negative comment on that, Richard, would it, that it not be an overlay. Change the zoning so that it's set hard and fast on it would be commercially zoned and uh, let it fly that way. Charlie, you and I should have a conversation because I, I don't know the pros and cons. You obviously have some thoughts on the cons of overlays. Uh, I'd love to hear your a little more in depth from you about why you feel that way. Maybe some of the maybe they'll release the uh, restrictions on having cups of coffee without a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? Would. <laughs> you can strain it through your mask. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, George, okay. can, can I talk to this here? Um, who, who's talking? This is Jim Manise. <laughs> Hi, Jim. How are you doing? All right. I, uh, this is not an agenda item, but I will take some a little comment if you... Yeah, well, some of us are looking to repurpose that property, possible senior center, um, community center, uh, possibly looking at it for, for senior housing. Um, those are some um, issues that have been on the table for a number of years. And um, for some reason, the study didn't look at repurposing the buildings or, or, or housing. And um, I'd rather not see the commercial district coming across Main Street any more than it has. I'd like to keep it between Main Street and 495, industrial, commercial. Um, it just, you know, so I, I just, and it's just not me. I mean, I've been speaking with people and um, there's interest in what I had just discussed with you. So I just want just to keep an open mind to that also. Thank you. And and that's the intent. Uh, this is just a flyby. No, that's okay. Thank you. Telling the board that we'd like to get together. We, we all know those other uses are in mind. And there's been some uh, examination of that, but we'll we'll take that up at another time. Thank you. But I think it's a good idea that the planning board be involved from the beginning. That's all I have, George. Very good. Thank you, Richard. Ken, did you have another report or anything? I, uh, were you set? No, I'm all set. Thanks. Um, the article for Monday night's discussion. That was distributed to the to the board to send it around in the revised version of it. I mean the main thing that that I've come up with, and I think I mentioned it before, was a we must have a finding that anything proposed meet the intent of the R-130 protection, groundwater protection. And if they can address that to the, you know, in a manner that the board is comfortable with, then. I 
then they have a project, I guess. <laughs> I was kind of surprised to see the other uh, athletic things had been taken off the table from the applicant. But anyway, we'll get in. We'll dig into that Monday night. Uh, that's all I have on the agenda this evening. Is there anything further? I'll make a motion to adjourn, George. That sounds like an idea. Second. <laughs> Want to discuss it for a while? <laughs> I'm done discussing. <laughs> yeah. Big discussion on Monday. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't know what I did with my phone, but if anybody has the time, we, we adjourned at uh, 648. 6.48? 6.48. Yep. Sounds good. Great. Thank you all. Thank you, you everyone. It.